Uh, first of all, thank you very much for the invitation to talk about immunotherapy in cancer. Um, I will explain just quickly in general uh, what cancer is and why we can target it with immunotherapy. Uh, what is immunotherapy? And then a little bit about immune responses against cancer. And then what type of cancer immunotherapy we're using and then go through three types of them. Uh, vaccines, antibodies and adoptive T-cell therapy. So uh, what is cancer? It, it's uncontrolled growth uh, of cells in the body. So you have a normal cell that gets genetic damage and then you get cancer cells that keep uh, dividing and they become too many. And they can also uh, migrate or move to other sites in the body uh, far away from where they originated. Uh, so cancer therapy is normally uh, designed to interfere with molecules that the tumor cells need to continue to grow and progress. And chemotherapy normally kills cancer cells that divide fast in the body, but also other normal cells that divide fast. Uh, that's why you lose hair when you have chemotherapy, for example. Um, so the aim using immunotherapy is to fight cancer with more precision and potentially fewer side effects. And this can be done by the immune system because it's very specific and it also has memory. And this is why we can vaccinate against viruses, etc., because the, the immune system will be trained and remember the in infection, and it will be the same with cancer cells. Um, so go to through therapeutic vaccines, and then these, these vaccines are generally therapeutic. They're not used before you get cancer. So that's the difference between uh, cancer and infectious disease. And they're designed to stimulate uh, white blood cells or T cells in the patient. And there's also been a lot of new monoclonal antibodies. And these can target proteins that are on the cell surface of uh, tumor cells. Or we have cellular therapy, where we can take the patient's own cells and put a molecule into these cells by changing them genetically and then give them back to the patient and the cells will be ready to target the cancer cells when they go, go into the body. So we have the immune cells in the blood that we're using. We have, they all originate from stem cells and then they uh, differentiate, they become progenitor cells and then uh, precursor cells. So they're not, then they go into the blood and you get different types of immune cells. And the main types we're looking at when we use uh, immunotherapy are the ones from the adaptive system, the ones that can have memory. B cells produce antibodies and you have T cells that can directly attack the tumor and then organize the rest of the immune system. And the tumor and the immune system constantly interact and they affect each other. So normally you see the normal cells in gray and then you have tumor cells in red and lots of different immune cells will come and attack the tumor cells and eliminate them. And this probably goes on in the body all the time and is why we don't get cancer. At some point, some of the cancer cells change genetically and they manage to avoid the immune system. They're genetically unstable and can adapt all the time. And then there are a few cells that will not they will manage to avoid the immune system, they will not be attacked, and then the tumor progresses, and you get tumor escape. They es escape from the immune attack, and that's when we see clinical uh, cancer. So this is actually when we're trying to boost the immune system with immunotherapy and trying to make the immune system see the cancer cells again. So cancer vaccines, uh, they're active immunotherapy because we're trying to activate the, tu the patient cells in the body to attack the cancer. Uh, they're better when they're used early in disease or after chemotherapy has uh, managed to take away most of the disease. 
because they need time to work. You need time to train the immune system uh, and for the T cells to attack the cancer. So that normally takes a few months. And how do these vaccines work? Uh, we can inject either cells or just fragments of tumour, uh, we call them antigens, but proteins from the tumour, into the skin. And then in the skin, there are specialised cells from the Im immune system that will take up these fragments and present them. They will go to the lymph node and they will show this to the lymphocytes. And the lymphocytes, if they recognise them, they will then make more lymphocytes. They can go out into the bloodstream and look for tumour cells where, that they can attack when they recognise the same, the same thing on the tumour cell surface. And then you get tumour destruction. <coughs> there have been several vaccine studies at uh, the Radium Hospital. Uh, this is a peptide vaccine study in lung cancer. Uh, and here you see in red patients that responded against the vaccine and in blue patients that did not respond to the vaccine. And uh, you can see that the survival of the responding patients is much longer. And you also have a tail of patients that responded very well and survived for several years. So immune response to the vaccine correlates with survival. We also use uh, dendritic cells, which are, which are specialized cells as vehicles for the vaccine. And the dritic cells were discovered by Ralph Steinmann, who ha got the Nobel Prize in 2011 for this. And this is the first photo ever of one of these cells. Uh, he died of cancer himself just around the time when he got the Nobel Prize. But these cells can be modified to show fragments of tumour cells to the T cells, and then these will be activated. And these are the most professional cells to do this and we can make those into a vaccine and give them to the patients. And this has also been done uh, at the Radium Hospital in collaboration with the Department for Neurosurgery. Uh, and here you can see the patient, the progression-free survival uh, of one group treated with dendritic cell vaccine for brain tumour and one group with standard therapy. So this is now taken further to randomised clinical studies. So the advantages of cancer vaccines uh, are that there is a survival benefit in responding patients and it is possible to use in the broad patient population depending on what you target or you can personalise them. But there are some challenges because the tumour cells can stop producing what is targeted unless the tumour cells really need it to progress <coughs> or they can change and stop presenting the target to the immune system. And it's very hard to cure patients with very advanced disease uh, as uh, the immune system might be affected and it takes a, a few months to work. Now, there are also immunomodulating antibodies. These antibodies can uh, affect the immune system. So you normally have a white blood cell or T cell that can recognise the fragments on the tumour cells. But because we can't have an active immune system all the time, a normal process is to uh, start expressing other proteins to dampen the immune response. But the, we don't want this to happen in cancer. We don't want the T cells to be deactivated. We want them to continue to attack the tumour cells. Uh, so in this case, the antibodies can block the interaction and we get a constantly activated T cell. And in some patients, this has shown real effect. This patient was resistant uh, to uh, all other treatment, tried chemotherapy and another antibody. It's a melanoma patient. And after one cycle with the anti-PD-1 antibody, uh, the tumour had already started to regress and after three cycles, it had improved a lot. And this we see more and more of, uh, really uh, exceptional clinical responses in patients with advanced disease. So the advantage of antibodies is that they're effective in uh, at least a small proportion of the patients, but more effective than anything we've seen before. They're easy to use in patients. 
Uh, the challenges can be when they affect the immune system that there are severe side effects. Uh, and it's difficult for them to work in all patients. You can also lose the target of the antibodies or the tumour can compensate by uh, starting to uh, avoid the immune system in other ways. And the antibodies degrade, so you normally have to keep giving them. And then you have adoptive cell transfer. And this is when you take the cells out of the patient and you modify them and put them back and they're ready to attack tumour cells and kill them. And you can either isolate the cells that are already in the patient and use them, but then you need to make more of them in the lab before you put them back in. Uh, in some cases that's not possible, but you can genetically engineer these cells to express a molecule that makes them target the tumour cells before they're given back. So you, you take cells from the blood in the patient and you isolate the immune cells and then you make more of these cells in the lab before you put in the gene that makes them recognize the tumor and you give them back. And we've done this also at the Radium Hospital uh, so far in mice and you can see that before treatment the blue is the cancer. Uh, and when they get a specific T cell treatment the tumor goes away. Whereas if you use control cells that do not have the right molecule, the tumor progresses. Uh, this has also been sorry, used in patients. And this was in acute leukemia. And it was resistant to chemotherapy and all, all other therapies. And you see very high respond rate, responding rates in these patients. Uh, so this will also be tried out at the Radium Hospital with one of the pharmaceutical companies. You always get headlines in the papers where you, <laughs> it looks like you're using HIV to treat the patients, but this is not the case. You use some part of the virus to put the new molecule into the cells. But we have, have seen amazing cures in children that were had incurable cancer. So this type of therapy has the advantage that you see clinical responses in patients that have failed all other types of therapy. It's not dependent on the patient genotype, so in principle if you put in the right targeting molecule you can target any type of cancer. But there are a limited number of targets on the cell surface that are only on the tumour and not in any normal cells. And also if you put in cells that are ready to kill a lot of tumour cells and the patient has a lot of tumour, this creates a lot of inflammation in the patient and this has to be treated as well and you can get toxicity. Um, so all of this has to be tested out very carefully. So immune therapy has had some dramatic effects in patients uh, with incurable disease. Cancer vaccines can be effective, but they need to be used in early stage cancer or just after surgery. We've also seen that uh, this potent therapy can give side effects uh, that are unwanted or very serious, and this must therefore be very well tested before we take it further to the patients. A lot of this has been done at the Department of Cell Therapy at Radom Hospital, which is headed by Gunnar Kalem. Uh, there's also been a long development from Gustav Gaudenach at Section for Immunology and we're collaborating with several clinical departments to test this out in patients and with the university dental and other companies. Thank you very much. say vaccine, uh, I'm not into the medical profession at all. Uh, I, I'm thinking of something uh, more generic that you give to the, a broader population uh, before the disease mm. happens. Uh, is, is that sort of an ultimate goal here or, or is this a rather specific treatment when mm. somebody has been diagnosed? Uh, it would be an ultimate goal in some patient groups. 
uh, there are some vaccines for viruses that could actually also prevent like, yeah, like HPV and um, uh, hepatitis B. Uh, if you know by either the genotype that the patient has hereditary cancer, then I think it would be possible to use these vaccines before the patient gets ill. But uh, as for, for now, there aren't that many cancer vaccines that are co commercialized yet, and they have to be tested out in patients <coughs> with uh, a lot of disease to start with. And, and that was my second question. Are the vaccines different for different types of cancer? And are they personalized according to the individual genetic mm. composition of the, of the patient? Or, or are they more general? Uh, you have both types. You have some types, especially the telomerase vaccines. Telomerase is an enzyme in the tumor cells that makes them uh, immortal. And it's required by the tumor. And this is expressed in 90% of tumors all over. So this can be used in all sorts of cancers and in most patients. And you can also make them so they don't depend on the uh, patient's genotype. So they can be generic. But then you also have some where you're targeting mutations in the tumor. And then they need to be personalized, yeah. Yes, uh, thank you for a very interesting presentation. I, it's uh, one of those things that I think a lot of people have, uh, well, most people know or know of uh, someone that's been, you know, uh, has cancer. Uh, and you said uh, it works or it does or doesn't work depending on the patient. Um, mm -hmm. Could you say something more about uh, what you know about which patients would respond to this uh, sort of more in generic terms? Yes. Um, I think for all of these trials, it's been patients that have failed all other types of therapy because we're, you're only allowed to test them out in patients that have not, uh, they don't have any other options. But as we're allowed to test them more and more early, people are starting to look for biomarkers, which means you can hopefully in a few years time pick the patients that will benefit from this type of therapy. And so far, we see immune responses against the vaccine, and they do correlate against with survival. And we see this in 50 to 70 percent of the patients. So if they had uh, less disease, maybe they would have more clinical responses as well. Thank you so much.